This is a quick introduction to harmonic oscillations. An oscillation is any movement that is repeatable. To begin with, consider a mass on a frictionless surface tied to a spring. We will slightly displace the mass to the right by amount x. By Hooke's law, the spring force will be to the left. This is an example of a restoring force because the force will try to return the system to its equilibrium position. Note that the force and hence acceleration are not constant with time because they are dependent on the instantaneous position function. We set up Newton's second law. Remember that the force and hence acceleration are opposite the direction of displacement and hence the negative sign here. We will algebraically rearrange the equation and declare that the acceleration is just the second time derivative of the position function. So now we need to find a function that satisfies this equation known as the equation of motion for a simple harmonic oscillator for all time. As the simplest of examples, we are going to use an equation of x equals a cosine omega t. a is referred to as the amplitude of the oscillation, and omega is the angular frequency. We take the derivative once to get the velocity function which now is going to have an amplitude of a omega. And then we will take the derivative again to get the acceleration function, which will have its own amplitude of a omega squared. Notice that the function x is, in fact, included in the acceleration function. The acceleration function is equal to just negative omega squared x. Let's now substitute it back into our equation of motion. We factor out the coefficients and realize that because x is time variable, the sum in the parentheses is what must be zero to satisfy the equation. All well and good, but physically, what does this mean? What do we actually observe? Recall that I said that oscillation is repetition of movement. The repetition of movement can be characterized by its oscillation period, i.e. the time it takes for the motion to return to its original state. For a sinusoidal function, it repeats when the argument is a multiple of 2 pi. Let us now borrow the argument from our trial function before, omega t, 
And now we will use capital T to mean period. As the relationship between our angular frequency and period is that T is equal to two pi over omega. Substitute in for omega. And we get that the period of oscillation for a simple harmonic oscillator is two pi square root of m over k. Let's interpret this in terms of Newton's second law. Remember acceleration is the change in velocity over time. The greater the acceleration, the faster things happen. So what does that translate in terms of period of oscillation? Well, the greater the period, the slower things are. The shorter the period, the quicker things are happening. So in terms of the uh, spring constant. Remember the role of the spring is to be the restoring force. It's what causes the acceleration. Hence, uh, the greater the spring constant, the greater the force, the greater the acceleration, the shorter the period of oscillation should be. I.e., if you hang a mass from a stiff spring, is going to oscillate a lot faster than if you hang it from a loose spring. As opposed to the mass, remember the role of the mass is inertia. It is the tendency to resist changes in motion. Hence, the greater the mass, the slower things are going to be. And that's what we see in our period of oscillation for a simple harmonic oscillator. The greater the mass, the longer the period of oscillation is, the longer things will take. If you reduce the mass, then the spring can oscillate it a lot faster, the shorter the period of oscillation is going to be. Notice, however, that amplitude is not included in the result. That means that the period of oscillation, how long it takes to return to the same state, is independent about how large the oscillation is. To understand why, remember the origin of our derivation, Newton's second law as well as Hooke's law. The greater the amplitude of oscillation, the greater the displacement, i.e. the more distance you have to travel. However, the greater the displacement, the greater the restoring force as well, which quickens the movement. These two effects cancel each other out for the net result that the period of oscillation for a simple harmonic oscillator will not be dependent on the amplitude. In the more generic sense, remember that in our simple derivation, we got coefficients that need to add up to zero. This also means that in the more generic sense for a simple harmonic oscillator, if you can rearrange the equation in this form at the top, 
then whatever is the coefficient next to x is must cancel out omega squared, i.e. become omega squared. Because all sinusoidal functions behave similarly when you take their second derivative, therefore, uh, our solution does not has, have to be just a cosine function. It could be any combination of cosine or sine functions. In fact, our solution can be a complete combination of cosine and sine functions with different periods as well, satisfying the same equation, as long as the periods are integer multiples of the fundamental period. And this is what defines this as harmonic.